Okay, so uh, talk is Brave New Pro World. Um, I'm just a little. Um, this talk and the whole thing I'm going to talk about was sort of inspired by uh, a talk Jesse Vincent gave at, I think he gave it at Yapsi NA last year, then Yapsi EU, and then OSCON, and like every other place that he possibly happened to show his face. Um, <clears throat> and it was. Uh, really talking about sort of the, the future direction of, of Perl. So the, if, you, if you don't know, there's been a lot of changes in the way before has been hacked on. I think most people, people are familiar with that, so I don't want to worry about it. But wait a second, oh no! Like a couple months ago, Jesse resigned as Pumpkin. But it's perfectly fine because we have a card now. So long with the new Pumpkin. Um, and uh, I talked to Rick and he approves all this stuff too, so. It's good. You know, it's good to have the transition of power, and then we still still are friendly with the with the dictator. Um, so one of the one of the big things that they uh, or that one of the key things about his talk and about some of his ideas that I sort of really latched onto was the idea of reducing the pearl core. Um, so <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff in the core that uh, really shouldn't be in the core. Things like the Unix uh, group IDs and permissions and crap like that that's really Unix specific uh, really shouldn't be in the core Perl. It should be a module outside of it. Formats, who the fuck uses formats anymore? Um, things like that can all be moved out into the core and especially when you have the new keyword APIs and stuff like that, you can pretty much make this uh, 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 almost invisible to, to the everyday user. <coughs> they're just there when they need to be but they're not necessarily cluttering, cluttering up the, the core internal C code. Um, now, I do want to point out, um, this arrow is wavy because there's a lot of hand waving going on with this concept, okay? Um, it probably won't be 100%, but even if we do 75% of what's proposed in the idea, that goes a long, long way. Um, and even if we could just do 50%, still, we're in a really, really good spot, a much better spot than we were in a couple of years ago, and even right now. And basically, my point is that a simpler language is a more evolvable language, um, and Perl has always done a really good job of evolving and changing over time. Um, uh, you know, if you if you think back to its, its origins as a system in tool, and then you know, it helping to bring about the web revolution with CGI and stuff like that, and then moving forward on into bioinformatics, and I mean, there's not anything that Perl doesn't touch at this point, um, and. This goes along with one of my favorite Larry quotes. Okay, so he said this right around the time he created Pro 5 and released Pro 5. And the point of this actually was that Pro 5 as a language in itself, uh, well, the context that he was speaking of, was as a language in, in and of itself would not evolve as much, but instead the modules would. Pro, one of the major contributions of Pro 5 was a better module system and objects and all that kind of stuff like that. So Larry really envisioned that that would take sort of the, the next, that, that would be the next leap with Perl. And that was about 10 or 12 years ago? What's, how long has P5 been oh, around? It's in 1996, it's quite yeah. a while. It's, it's been around for a long time. So <clears throat> this is basically, he was sort of predicting the CPAN and, and what that would become there. So we go back to that original P5 vision. Um, uh, you know, anything we can do to make it more evolvable and bring the innovation into the modules or let the, let the, the language grow out of the modules. Um, this is sort of, it, it's all keeping in mind in my opinion. So, uh, this brings me to, so, you know, reducing the core, well that's great because now there's extra room and I can put my stuff into it. Um, and so, uh, that's this proposal. Um, so, uh, how many people know what a MOP is? Okay, I'm going to skip these slides, except for this, because I think this is fun. This is what I tell my mom when she says, what is moose? This is what I tell her, okay? <laughs> okay. It's an abstraction, the mop, a system of abstractions, classes, methods, etc. that you build abstractions with your classes. And she just goes, whatever. <laughs> why, why, why do you do this to me? Uh, so, anyway, <clears throat> quick review of the status quo. Um, this is a mop. It's an ugly mop with a really obtuse syntax, but this is a mop for, for all intents and purposes because this is an API into what Perl has as a base class system. Um, Moose, okay, built on top of class mop, 
So it's all, all, all the more formalized mapping there. Even before that, we had Class Meta by David Wheeler, um, which attempted to do a lot of this stuff. Um, others, if you really want to you know, be silly, you could say things like Class Accessor, Class Method Maker, anything that did that kind of stuff really provided you some level of an API into <coughs> what is the underlying object system. So, your future perhaps. Um, so, um, this is, uh, I'm basically going to go through a couple syntax examples um, for, uh, for the proposed uh, object system. At first we started out with the idea of, well, well, let's just bring a mop into the core. And then we kind of came to the conclusion, or I came to the conclusion that then we're going to have to have all the hacks and gross shit that we had put together on Moose and class mop now in the core, and that doesn't really get us anywhere. Um, and it's really about time that, you know, uh, 20 years ago, or however many, 18 years ago, when P5 came out, the state of the art of OO was C++, okay? Um, Java was barely around, Python was barely around, Ruby wasn't even out yet, all these things, uh, the things have changed a lot. Since, since then, and it's time that Perl just sort of takes a giant leap forward and stops building upon the same foundation of packages and blessed references and all that, because those things have problems. And so, really, it's time to start fresh. And so that's sort of what the proposal is. Um, we'll start fresh, but within the same Perl context. So, so this is very simple. <clears throat> um, we're trying to reduce the amount of <clears throat> actual keywords added to the language. Keep it really simple, keep it really straightforward. So you have class, you have has, and you have method. That's it. Um, a lot of the things, too, we're trying to make sure that they're semantically familiar to you. Okay? And I'll, I'll explain that as we can continue to go along. Um, the first thing is has describes an attribute. Okay? So has x. Um, the is rw is something that we're sort of we're pondering here. I, I don't think we can get away with creating an object system without. Uh, providing some sort of accessor generation in there. So we'll probably allow something like that. Um, these, what's in between those parentheses is what I call um, uh, metadata, okay? If you're familiar with Java annotations or, or uh, there's a facility in C-sharp for, Python has decorators, okay? All those things are compiler directives that essentially tell the compiler to do something different within this context that's defined, okay? so. Uh, we have those on here, and so that's where that would come from. Again, this is this this is a little controversial. Haven't figured it out entirely yet. But you're basically declaring a variable, okay, a, a class attribute or or class member or whatever you you prefer to call it. Uh, you're giving it a, a default value, okay, and then you can use it in your methods, and it's perfectly legal and valid in terms of uh, the lexical scope. Now, <clears throat> this isn't really lexical. But it, it, it behaves as much as possible in the same way that a line or an hour variable will, in that it, it's, 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 you're defining a variable within a uh, certain scope. So the scope here is what I call instance scope. Okay? So every time a method is executed, these values are, are essentially placed inside the lexical pad. Okay? So for every, in, every instance of point you have when you call clear on it, it replaces the lexical pad of this method with variables that, that uh, 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 map to the values that you're storing in the instance, okay? Um, does that make any sense, or did I go off on too deep on a tangent? Well, yeah, it kind of, kind of makes sense, but I guess uh, my first impression of reading the slide is it's really confusing that the has lines look like I'm assigning to a method call, basically. That's kind of what yeah, it that, feels that's, like. This kind of stuff, we're, we're like I said, this is kind of we're working on this one okay. here. Um, and is you you are if you were to take those out, okay, and you and write your own accessors, you you are assigning to it, but this is lazy. Sure. So it won't until you create an instance, it won't oh, do anything there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it, that good point. And, and is, that's, it, is it purposely that you're not using the default parameter? As like, were we trying to get away from right. setting so, default and say equals? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that's it's yeah. nice. It's less typing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's uh, it, 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 uh, default has its problems in that you have to wrap it in a sub and you have to know all that kind of junk. Um, you know, this 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 system is purposefully not Moose. 
because Moose has a lot of opinions in it, but it's purposely built as a system that you could build Moose upon and anybody else could build their stuff upon, which means that we can have a greater layer of level of compatibility between different competing object systems because they'd all use the same underlying model. So, uh, key value, access to attributes. Um, this is also a slightly controversial point, but I think uh, the Perl world has sort of kind of settled on this being the default. There's a couple people who argue with me regularly on Perl punks because they think this is a travesty. You should be able to avoid this happening um, and not allow them to do this, but I think from a default point of view, it's probably sensible. Um, uh, so we do have ways to prevent it from happening in Moose. We may we can come up with some sort of way to do this in the P5 mop. Again, this is this is a proposal. You know, we have a prototype. Uh, it runs every every bit of code that you're seeing on the screen actually runs and has tests right now. In the um, what's that? In the prototype. Yes. Yes. Uh, and the prototypes. Uh, it's reasonably sane. All the really crazy, crazy stuff is stuffed into like one corner. Um, but uh, it, it's reasonably sane. Um, but the point is, you know, again, this is a proposal. So we're, we're putting it out there, we're figuring it out. Um, we're going for minimalism simply because uh, I'd rather have people add on to it and have the ability to add on to it and put their own opinions into it rather than to put too much opinion into the pro core. Um, so basically this point is here, it's, it's, it's exactly like you're used to. Um, new slide software, it doesn't really do that great. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, what this is showing is uh, extension. Um, so <coughs> um, and here comes another really and, and, and again, this as being the annotation on attached to the has variable. This is the annotation attached to the class. Okay. Um, Another point here that's probably going to be controversial is that I think we should have a single inheritance system. I think that multiple inheritance, while useful at times, is more of a problem than anything else uh, in the long run. And I think that if we have roles, which are in the proposal, then we really don't need multiple inheritance. Um, it's, it's very rare that you do end up needing it. Now that all said, because this has to be able to be compatible and work with the uh, existing old school classes, okay, because I'm not going to create a new system that can't talk to the old <coughs> system. They have to be able to subclass one another and that kind of stuff. Um, it is possible, and if you have questions, exactly ask Jesse after, the, after this. It is possible to implement a multiple inheritance system on top of this single inheritance base without too much trouble. Um, it takes some mop hacking. I don't know if I'd say without too much trouble. Okay, okay. <laughs> without, only Jesse's trouble. Why didn't you pull the points? Because it's not a string. Thank you. Sean. There you go. You're right. <laughs> um, classes are first class things. They're 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 not string lookups anymore. Okay. One of my big problems with package based classes is that everything is a string lookup. So you bless your reference with a string, and that goes and gets looked up as a package. You inherit by putting strings into the isa array, and that goes up and gets looked up in a package. When you do foo uh, arrow new. You're, you actually have a string that's special case to be allowed to be a bare word that's calling that and that goes and gets looked up in a packet. So that whole lookup stuff is just silly. And so uh, point is, an, is a thing. It's, it's, it's an actual instance itself, an instance of class with the capital C. Um, and if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that later because that gets deep meta craziness. Um, but the point is, is that these, these objects, there are these classes are concrete things that you can ask questions, you can call methods on, you can do things with. Um, so again, the isRW, again, uh, I haven't, it's, that's actually not in the prototype, the isRW, because I still haven't decided whether it's right or not. Um, uh, super, I um, actually had a debate, um, well not a debate, but I, I had a discussion a little bit with um, uh, Audrey Tang, who did the Pugs project, and Larry Wall, so I, I emailed this to them and said, hey guys, what do you think? Um, and, and so there's some discussion about this, exactly how it should work. But again, for a single inheritance system, just saying super should be enough to, to call out. And super without parentheses, or without, without passing arguments, uh, should just take the previous arguments, which I don't think the prototype does, 
Um, and, but you can also assign new arguments uh, into that. Um, so also, now the prototype is not very fast because it's got a lot of silly stuff going on and we haven't even gone anywhere near trying to optimize, but this actually is pretty fast. This is much faster than a hash of This is a lexical pattern of okay? A lot faster than looking it up in a hash, a lot faster than calling your own accessor, stuff like that. All right, now we've got it. Oh, is that bigger again? <clears throat> so. Okay, so a few more examples here. Um, and I'm just going to point out a few things here. Uh, one is that um, you can take arguments. They're simple arguments. Um, there's no types, nothing like that. I, I deliberately did not put types at all into this because that's a separate proposal and I don't think types are actually possible in Perl 5. Um, and there are people who disagree with me, but it shouldn't be part of this. Um, uh, I believe, Jesse, do we have the slurpy types at the end? The um, I think you can. I think we do. Remember. You, you can have an array parameter. It, it, should, this looks exactly like myself. So I if you put an array actually, parameter, I think, I, think you can. I, think, I think it is in there. Yeah. If you put an array parameter or pull in an array, you know, bring in an array, but you can't put an array parameter and a, a hash parameter after it's still flat. So basically, um, just just a, a, imagine like there's a my in front of that parentheses and the yeah. equals dollar under, or um, <laughs> right. at exactly. underscore, and that's basically how it should be parsed. Yep. Uh, which again, that's that's what I was saying before. I try to make this as semantically comfortable for everybody as possible. We're not trying to invent new semantics. We're trying to just either maybe move things a little bit here, but they should all come back to feeling the same. One nice thing about this example I'm going to run because I'm getting close to my time. Uh, I like this. It's kind of nice. Um, you 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 can. I mean, that, it just reduces the amount of syntax down drastically. Um, uh, one question that has been asked is what if I put my balance in front of here, okay, and made a lexical within my, me my method that overrode one of these? Well, what do you think would happen? It would shadow, It'll right? Well, no, 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 no. It, 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 would, it would just shadow that. So it, it, it won't do anything surprising. It'll do exactly what you would expect. Should it work? Um, what was the question? Does, does should, should it warn? Should it warn? Yeah. But why? Does, do, do, are you warned when you override a, another lexical? You guys have pro critic. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> I mean, it, that, that's that's a, that's a good point, and that's a point of debate. But my feeling is, if you did it, you did it for a reason. And why should you warn? Are you going to propagate local the same way? If you declare my twice, in the like same if you, scope, I don't know about that. If you localize it and then call it draw, right. do you see the shattered one or the the <laughs> instant <laughs> scope one? Yeah. I would do, write a test. <laughs> thought seemed to be that if you split, if you say my x and my x in the same scope, you get a warning. And what do you do? If they're in the same scope, if it's in right, the same scope, right? But see, these aren't necessarily in the same scope. But in, within within of the method, balance is sort of in scope in this weird, not quite lexical way. Right. So I don't, again, as I said, it's, it's a point out, for it's debate. Like um, it's uh, these these are the fine details that will eventually have to get worked out in there, and actually. Uh, if you want to, uh, 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 Sprout, one of the core hackers, uh, was doing this with Jesse and I. He was throwing in a ton of GitHub issues, and we were sort of discussing them in there. And eventually, when the spec is finished, meaning I have enough time to finish the spec, um, it'll probably link out to some of these Git GitHub issue discussions. So if you want to, throw it as a GitHub, GitHub issue, and, and we'll, it'll be on everybody's radar. Um, okay. All right, never use a new uh, software. Never use, never <laughs> use <a> new software. <laughs> never upgrade. Yeah, okay, so this screen, <laughs> this screen was actually the, uh, the, the, the subclass bank account. Um, and, and it really wasn't too much extra in there. I don't know why. I guess I, I got another question similar. This, it's very interesting that it's not quite lexical, but it's not quite not lexical. You're in this weird space. What do you do with like continuations and stuff like that? Uh, Let's say uh, that that maybe. balance thing was actually some continuation with a bunch of sta you know, state variables and stuff like that. Um, How would you deal with that? You're, you're in this weird space where it's not a lexical scope, but it's not not a lexical scope. So what is that thing? I don't know. Uh, uh, continuations <laughs> would 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 be interesting. Okay, so um, get a vision. Yeah. Um, right. 
see if it'll go again. Okay, yeah, there we go. So you can't really see it. It sucks. This software sucks. Don't ever use it. Um, uh, checking account extends bank account. You get an overdraft account. Um, this is the only really useful thing in here is super amount. So being able to pass in a replacement uh, value uh, with super. Um, okay, so roles. This is brand new. New slides. Um, uh, and only partially complete feature. Jesse and I spent a while last night debating which exact direction to go. Um, on this, so uh, it's it's getting there. But uh, this, I think, this level that I'm going to show you, we, we're, we decided upon, right, Jesse? Um, <laughs> uh, exactly how they're implemented, and a little bit on how they exactly behave. We'll, we'll get to. So uh, a required method would be a method simply with no definition, um, uh, and then you'd have uh, other methods here. So this equals implemented in terms of itself. We're expecting the other. Variable in there. Um, so roles can also consume other roles. Okay. Um, again, uh, required method, and then you implement these. Okay. <coughs> this is all building up here. Um, a completely abstract role that is just an interface. Um, it's just simply that. Um, if you like the whole Java thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's your software? Damn it. I am broken. <laughs> broken. <laughs> 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 broken. Yeah, I, I don't even remember what it is right now. Um, okay, close it and open it up again. Um, it is called uh, Presentation. I think I might have the wrong version of it, so I, I, I really shouldn't badmouth the software so much as I should badmouth so myself for. For using it and not testing it, it didn't do this to me last time. Actually, it was a different laptop, so it wasn't Lion. Huh. Okay. All right. Let's play Lion. So, if you look really closely, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a currency class. Uh, you can uh, consume multiple roles. Okay. So you pass in an array ref of roles. Um, I may do away with these right there because you can pretty much say uh, you, you can detect a key value pair because the key is always going to be a string. Um, so uh, amount is read right, but then see we just had to basically implement those two required methods uh, right there. So it's very similar to to uh, how, how moose rolls work. Um, okay, so um, so that was your basic syntax tour. Uh, now here's some of the cool things that just sort of fell out of this, okay? Um, we get compile time errors on, on <coughs> attributes now. You don't have to even care. Um, it, it'll die like it should uh, if you if you ever try and access something that's not really there. Um, so it sort of gives you the inside out without inside out. Um, uh, so classes are first class things. They're 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 concrete things, um, which means you can put them in packages. Which means we can start actually using packages the same way other people use packages as packages. Um, you can. The, the, I, I propose to some of the core guys at LPW um, that we create in the type glob another slot called class or called op. No, class. I think it was, um, and that's where these things would sit. And so they basically work just like subroutines. Um, uh, they're, they're 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 entries into the stash um, of a package, and you can just call them like that. Okay, as you would expect. Again, I'm trying to piggyback on the. Uh, Expected semantics. Um, the other nice thing that sort of falls out of doing that is the fact that this, the, the, the these variables that you define in your package actually, and your subroutines that you define in your package, are actually in the scope of the class here. Um, so I, I have access to the foo in there. So if I wanted to have a package variable a configuration in a package or something, I mean, you could do that. Um, this could almost be a hackish way of doing private methods. Because this this is not a method in the namespace of the class, uh, it's not private because it's accessible within the bar package, but it's private from the point of view of the class. It's it's not there. Now it's not a method, but yeah, I was going to say yeah, you have to pass in the instance yourself, okay, yeah, yeah. but um, which also again falling right out of it. Uh, it means that when you import subroutines, they're not part of your class namespace at all. Okay, so stuff like this just becomes easy. Okay. And I don't know. If I, hold on. 
<coughs> There's an important thing to be noted. It's what? It's just there. You don't have to. You don't have to, myself equal shit. You don't have to do that. Anymore. Um, okay. And so there it is. Wow. One time. Three minutes early? No, seven minutes. Seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> okay. You, you started, uh, but he's fine. Okay. Uh, it's on GitHub. Uh, if you have a concern or question or something like that, throw in the GitHub issues. We're talking on there. Uh, if you want to correct my bad grammar and spelling in the, pro or in the spec, please do so. Um, uh, if you want to run, run or write test suites or anything, if you want to hack on any of it, please come along. Uh, you know, especially tests. If you just want to come in and sort of fiddle around with it, Write it as a test and give it to me. <laughs> that way, we'll have it. I'd rather run three thousand tests, you know, than uh, than not. Because, you know, the part of what we're trying to do is build this prototype uh, that may may or may not immediately get into core. May sit as like an outside pragma for a little while as it gets tested and sort of vetted and everything like that before it eventually makes it into core. So the more people who fiddle with it and write tests with it and stuff like that, the better. Um, because it'll just mean that by the time it actually gets into core, um, it'll be fixed and not like smart matching <laughs> stuff like that. So you know, what I mean, but that's a problem we're trying not to we're trying not to 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 recreate. Um, so anyway, that's the end. Thank you very much.